Hi guys, I'm Maylin Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. Welcome to our YouTube channel. This week I want to talk about Achilles tendinopathy. Specifically, I want to tell you my Achilles tendinopathy story because I've been struggling with my right Achilles tendon for quite a few months, uh, i.e. almost a year, and I would say that I'm on the road to recovery, but um, typically, you need to be a year functional and symptom free to really say that you're fully recovered. So usually I have a model for my videos, but today I wanted to, like I said, to really tell you my story. So tell you a little bit about kind of where I started and how I progressed and, and how I got to where I am now, which is recovering <laughs> with regards to my Achilles tendon. So, Hey guys, thanks for watching our videos and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. One thing that we, I think, need to understand about tendinopathy or, or tendon health is there's a lot of factors that we need to consider when we're approaching it. Obviously, we need to, you know, think about the, the tendon tissue, the structure. We need to think about symptoms. Um, we need to think about function, so not just the tendon, but the muscle tendon unit. Um, and we also need to think about, well, psychological aspects, so apprehension that you'll kind of get when you've had a tendon that's been sore with activity. And that's the thing with tendinopathy. It's never sore at rest. It's usually sore with activity. Um, you tend to become apprehensive of certain movements, plus the fact that there's a certain, there's, there's adaptation, there's motor adaptation to pain. So you actually change the way you move or you uh, unconsciously will change the way you move to kind of um, protect that injured tissue. And I noticed that in simple things like um, walking even sometimes, uh, working on my foot function. Uh, when I started to run again, uh, you know, I realized that a lot of things had changed and that I was purposely thinking about how my foot would contact the ground and all that kind of stuff. And at some point you kind of need to move away from that and restore that movement variability that you're supposed to have, right? So tendons, you know, I, I say I've been struggling for almost a year. That's the thing with tendons, especially energy storing tendons like the Achilles tendon is they have active metabolism, but it's much, much slower than, for example, skeletal muscle. So it's a good thing because it allows them to carry load and, and, and tension for, for a long time. But the, the, the downside of that is that they're very slow to heal. So it's a very long process and you need to be very patient. Um, my tendinopathy or my pain is insertional. So it's at the insertion of my Achilles, not a mid portion of my Achilles. So one of the things you'll often hear me say is no stretching with tendinopathy when, uh, when you're dealing with a tendon um, that crosses, that has an insertion over a, a bony cam because there's that compression issue. So I wanna try to kind of take you through a little bit of again, where I started and, and how I kind of progressed in, in a nutshell, okay? So obviously um, we say no stretching, but there's gonna be muscle and myofascial stuff that you need to deal with. With my tendinopathy came some calf weakness. Um, obviously there's stiffness. Um, the, the tibialis posterior and peroneals tend to be um, overactive because they're trying to do the job of the calf. So there's a, there's a lot of stiffness in there. Um, but like I said, no stretching. So a lot of soft tissue work. So in the initial phases where I had morning stiffness and had, had pain with activity, like many activities, like sometimes even walking, um, I did a lot of the soft tissue work, so manual soft tissue work on myself, releasing the calf, releasing the tib pose, releasing those muscles, um, and ankle pumps. So ankle pumps like just sitting down on the floor and just pumping my ankles just to get circulation going because when you wake up with that morning stiffness, it helps to move it around, get some circulation, and it kind of goes away. You know how they always say with tendonitis, it hurts and then you start moving and the pain goes away. <laughs> the circulation has that effect. So to kind of get rid of that stiffness so I'm not moving with pain as I go into my activation and integration sequence. So a lot of that at the beginning and obviously a lot of toe mobility work, foot work, plantar fascia stuff, because your foot 
starts to kind of work differently because you're trying to offload that tendon, the foot's working differently, you're not doing the same activities as you were doing. So a lot of consistent soft tissue work, ankle pumps, toe mobilization exercises, foot mobilization exercises. And then in my activation sequence, I always also did a lot of foot intrinsic work and obviously calf raises. And you, you'll see that calf raises are always going to be prescribed for Achilles tendinopathy. Um, one thing I think you should know is that if it's insertional pain, you don't do your calf raises off a, a block or a stair. Because if you go into dorsiflexion and you let that heel hang, you're getting into that increased dorsiflexion position that's gonna increase compression on the tendon. And for me, that was super irritable. So I only ever did my calf raises off the floor, so I would never go down lower than a neutral position, which for me was tolerable. And then single leg as well, because I noticed a lot of weakness in my right calf versus my left calf. And as I progressed that, it, it, eventually I started doing quick calf raises, right? To increase the, the speed of contraction, but never off a step. So I avoided that for quite a long time. In the integration sequence, tendons love load. They need to be loaded. And another reason why we don't want to stretch tendon is because the, the tendon that's te that, that has the tendinopathic tendon becomes too compliant. We don't want to stretch a compliant tendon. So if there isn't a range of motion issue, you don't need to stretch anyway. But if there's myofascial stuff, again, use the soft tissue stuff. So in the integration sequence, I need to continue to load, right? And I know that I'm going to have limited activities, like I couldn't run anymore, I couldn't do box jumps anymore, I couldn't do all those kinds of stuff, but I could still weight train, and that's beneficial for my tendon just to load it. And even though we talk about uh, it's eccentric training for tendons or it's concentric training, you can mix everything. Just respect the fact that for insertional, you don't want to have increased dorsiflexion. So I went from, for example, you know, doing box, no more front squats, just box squats because there's a lot less dorsiflexion and then I can load. Obviously no contraindications to deadlifting. Um, if I was doing lunges, I didn't let my knee come forward because that would you know, put me in a more dorsiflex position and it was irritable. And then eventually I did exercises like you know, heel hover split squats where my heel is hovering and I'm doing a split squat with just my forefoot up on a step. So I'm still not in dorsiflexion, but I'm really working on resisting that, those kind of movements and until eventually I was able to do declined, you know, declined single leg stuff, and then eventually knee forward lunges, right? Where now I'm really able to get into that dorsiflex position. It's not irritable anymore, and I'm slowly strengthening that. Okay, so a progression where I want to be able to keep loading my tendon, but respecting my symptoms, right? Uh, I wanna keep loading my calves because there's weakness, but again, respecting the ranges of motions that are gonna be irritable. I'm restoring function by the way I manipulate my exercises in the activation sequence. And then of course, you know, dealing with the psychological aspects uh, or the motor adaptation to pain, you can use um, externally paced eccentric. So eventually I did my calf raises to a metronome. So I had a metronome going three, two, one, and up in three, two, one, and down in three. So it was an external pace as opposed to me counting my own tempo. So those are all the little kind of things that you can manipulate. So your classic calf raise exercises that are required to decrease calf inhibition go in the activation sequence and then you just ma manipulate your, integra your, your integration to consistently load the tendon and increase that tolerance to a more dorsi flexed position. Okay, so hopefully that gives you guys a bit of a Achilles tendinopathy story and, and kind of an overview of how you might progress the exercises that you do to put that tendon under load and then to continue your overall loading in ways that will continue to protect the tendon, but you're building up that tissue, that structure. 
So hopefully um, you guys enjoyed that. If you have had Achilles tendinopathy, tell me about your story, drop it in the comments below. I'll be happy to hear from you. And on that note, I will see you next week.